Hi, I'm Nico. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I am going to try to complete a project that started way back in 2020, and that is to paint my own distressed painterly background. So I got permission from my building to use this space here in the attic for two or three days. And I have no idea what I'm doing, but I gathered a bunch of supplies uh, that I got from Google searches and I will like tell you everything I'm using. But I really wanted to do this video now because I just got the keys to this uh, space and this is the first day and I have no idea how long this is going to take. I might be an old man with a beard and still no backdrop to show for it by the end of this video, but uh, we'll see. This is day one and I'm excited. So this is my backdrop. It's uh, 150 wide by uh, probably 10 meters long. It's a very long roll of canvas and it is primed, which means it's not, uh, this side is raw canvas, but that side, is, I, don't know, I don't know much you can see, is already primed with white paint. And that's useful because that means it won't uh, dimensionally change too much when I add a bunch of paint and water on it because uh, it's already saturated with this primer layer. Let's go, I'm excited. So of course the first thing I want to do is uh, protect the floor I'm working on with some plastic and then just to uh, unfold my canvas. Uh, mixing my paint, I'm using acrylic artist paint that I found at an art supply store. Uh, you can see for this first try I used a bunch of green, um, a bit of grey and really a hint of white. And then uh, mixing some water. I saw online that you have to use water to, to get more uh, spread out of your paint so that you don't use a whole tube just to do one canvas. Uh, here you can see I'm uh, using a roll with a long handle and I'm mixing the, the paints and the water. What happened on this first try, you're gonna see I'm not using enough water so I'm gonna get really really little coverage out of all that paint and I mixed the colors too well. So I'm getting almost a solid green. So two mistakes here, no coverage and only solid green. Here you can see the paint got lighter because I added some water to my uh, bucket or whatever you call this thing. I know you can see I'm painting with a lighter green because of all that water, but uh, so I got the coverage, but I don't really get much uh, distressed aspect. And uh, here's how it work, looks after a first layer of that green and gray and white. So yeah, I got the coverage, but not the distressed. Uh, this is my third layer. You can see I'm getting a good grip at it now. It's a lot of water and just a little bit of paint. And you can see that I, I'm going to stop uh, mixing when there's still uh, stains on my roll, stains of solid color. You can see them here. And now when I paint, those stains get uh, transferred into the backdrop. So this is like the most efficient way I've found to get the distressed thing. But you can see lots of uh, traces from the roll. And I don't want those roll marks, so then it's just a game of really by light touch going over and getting rid of the roll marks, but not completely killing the distressed uh, dots. So I put quite a few layers on that first backdrop. I can't remember exactly how many, uh, but at, when I was done, it looked like this. And that's when I cut for the first day. So you can see I have this I guess it's the most realistic it's been, like this really looks like an ancient wall, it's not that distressed, but um, it's definitely not a solid color either. So this is day two, it's 8.30 in the morning. Uh, the backdrop looks okay, uh, I like the distressed level, but I feel like it's very green. So I'm gonna attempt a second layer where I'm gonna use mostly gray and white to tone down the saturation a little bit. Let's try this. So for this uh, second uh, color on the backdrop, uh, you can see I'm mixing a lot of gray and a little bit of white and no green at all because my uh, roll uh, is still uh, quite uh, saturated with green from the day before. So I'm gonna get a lot of green, I know it from the roll. So what I'm trying to do here is just add a lot of gray and white to desaturate the, the color. So once again, you see that I'm not mixing uh, perfectly on the roll so that I introduce a lot of uh, dots and marks for that uh, distressed aspect. 
So this is me starting. It looks like it's gonna go all right. And uh, after a lot of uh, rolling, this is what it looks like. Then just like the day before, it's a matter of uh, just going over and over it to uh, get rid of the roll marks. And also you can see this kind of a grid uh, aspect going on because uh, the stains on the roll, as the roll travels on the canvas, the stains always happen at the same distance. So I, I'm trying to break that uh, pattern a little bit and make things more random. While you watch me paint, uh, let's take the time to explain uh, the reasons why I chose this color. It's a sort of uh, turquoise, uh, a green with lots of blue in it, uh, cyan would be another word. And the reason I chose it is it's because it's the complementary color to Caucasian skin. So this would give me the most um, contrast to a skin tone for portraits. So here's what I was looking at at the end of that layer. Um, you can see that to get rid of all the brush marks and the pattern, I had to kill a lot of the distressed effect. So it's a game of give and take. Um, the, if you want to go over it a lot to get a clean result, you're going to lose a lot of distressed effect. So you'd, rather, you, you'd better start with a very, very distressed look. Later, a few hours that, later that day, I decided to put that first backdrop aside to dry and start another one, because why not? And for that second one, I wanted to, to go with a much more grey look. So I decided to mix only grey paint in my, um, in my bucket, just grey and white and no colour at all. Again, I know that my roll is still very saturated with uh, this green colour, so I know that it will find its way onto the backdrop anyway. And you can see that I'm getting a really nice grey with a hint of, a, of cyan in there. And you can see that the, the more I spread, uh, at the beginning I get, was getting all the grey on the surface of the roll, but the more I, I run out of paint, the more the, the green colour that's on uh, in, in the core of the roll uh, comes out. Then again, it's just a game of uh, going over a million times in different directions to get rid of uh, any trace of the roll and just keep the, the color and the texture that was applied first. And then I had a maybe brilliant, maybe stupid idea. I decided to take that second backdrop while the paint was very fresh and to drop it over my first backdrop like a sandwich. Uh, get ready to see some beautiful footage of me frolicking over the backdrop to make sure the contact happens. Yeah, this doesn't need any comments. But the result when I finally come off was uh, pretty interesting. Um, all I did after that was uh, again run my roll over both backdrops a bit to get rid of any to sharp marks and just uh, blur the patterns a little bit. And this is what the final result looks for both backgrounds. So it's 12.30. Whew. That was a bit of a workout. Uh, I think I'm done for now on those two. I have a light gray one with a bit of uh, texture and a dark green one with a lot more texture. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna do anything to either of those anymore. Uh, I'm gonna leave good enough alone and uh, I'll just check out how they photograph next. There was one thing left to do before uh, taking pictures. Of course, it was to sew some pockets on the backdrops so I can use a crossbar or a broomstick or something to hold them together. Um, thank you, Astrid, for your help. Once the backdrop is hung, it looks like this. Uh, notice those horizontal marks. That's because when the backdrop was rolled, I stored it uh, horizontal laying on the floor. Never do that. You'll get those marks. You should always store a rolled backdrop vertically, leaning against the wall. So here's the light setup that I decided to use for those test pictures. Uh, I thought I was use only umbrellas because uh, they are the cheapest and simplest modifier. So in case somebody watches this video and they're wondering what to get for their first light modifier, uh, umbrellas are a good place to start, I think. So here you can see that the umbrella on the left of your screen is my uh, main light. It's uh, way up high and slightly off axis. So it's halfway between uh, a butterfly and a side light 
and the light on the right is my fill and it's metered just one stop under for a very uh, low contrast fill. And here's what the pictures look like. So you can see that the backdrop indeed does contrast with skin tones a lot. Um, the pattern is not that readable and I realized that's because my uh, the contrast in there is mostly a contrast of color and not a contrast of uh, brightness. So that's a lesson for me for next time. Uh, I should really have elements of lighter patches and darker patches uh, to get a big bit better contrast on the backdrop. But once I converted to black and white and used um, a yellow orange filter uh, or simulated it with the channels, then I can really make the contrast on the backdrop uh, uh, become more prominent because I'm separating the cyan and the greens on the channels. And here is the second backdrop, uh, the lighter one. You can see it looks really nice in color. Again, contrasting the skin tone, but much less saturated. And again, black and white with a simulated yellow filter. It's a, it's a nice look too. I like this one. So as a conclusion, um, I think I did all right for a first try. Uh, I'm actually surprised at how easy it was to just try and get something decent looking out of a first try. Uh, I am going to keep at it, I'm going to buy more paints and I'm going to keep experimenting and hopefully I can get to the level of Olifant one day. Uh, this was also very fun, uh, it was a really nice way to spend a couple of days off. I was joking on Instagram that I felt like a true 19th century photographer now because I shoot a lot of large format and I process my own black and white film at home and now I paint my own backdrops. So I can really work as a studio photographer without the support of any other companies, and that's fun. Uh, I would like to say thank you for you guys for uh, being my inspiration on this project. Uh, I have had those supplies laying around for a while. Uh, very often I will start a project, I will even shop for it, and then uh, just stockpile the stuff in my attic and never actually do anything. But uh, somebody commented on my previous video on the kid backdrop review, like, hey, why don't you paint your own? And I was like, yeah, why don't I paint my own? So can't remember what your name was, but thank you so much. And thank you to all of you. I'm, I'm very thankful. I am getting something out of this. And it's that it's the kick in the butt to get me out of the house or get me out of my rut and get me to do cool stuff. Because uh, I'm the kind of guy that has a lot of ideas, but really needs a push to get from the from here to out there. So I'm really glad I started this channel for that and it's it's doing me a lot of good. So thank you guys and I really appreciate you. Thanks for tuning in and I'll talk to you some other time about another topic. Cheers.